Hello and welcome to the inside of the new Suzuki Jimny, a car which I like a great deal, which is kind of one of the reasons why we're doing this video, because you seem to like it a great deal as well. It's a really good, fun, small off-roader. And today we are going to meet one of its ancestors, one of the cars that made the Suzuki Jimny the household name that it is, the Suzuki SJ. And we're going to try and see kind of where the Jimny has come from and where it has gone to in the same way that we did with the Honda Integra Type R versus Civic Type R recently, which you may have seen. If not, you may wish to peruse the Autocar back catalogue for it. You could subscribe, you could up thumb, you could turn notifications on, and every time we do one of these, I don't know, Autocar Hero videos, call them what you will, you'd never miss one. What I like about the Jimny is that it remains true to its small car roots. It was always meant to be the compact off-roader that met Japan's very stringent size rules, the K-car regulations. This version that we get in Europe does not, but there is one in Japan that doesn't have the wheel arch extensions, and it still meets those compact car regs that mean it's easier to own a car in one of Japan's cities. Now, some people have said that the new Jimny is not necessarily the greatest car on the road, because it's a fabulous small off-roader with an independent chassis and solid rear axles and a small buzzy engine and only a five-speed gearbox. It doesn't make itself the world's greatest off-roader on the road. But I think that could be a little bit harsh. I'm doing around 40 miles an hour and yes, it is short geared. That's top and at 40 miles an hour we're already pulling 2000 RPM. So at 60 that would be three, at 70 it's like three and a half. So by the time you're up to a cruise, you're really, you know, buzzing along. The steering gets a little bit vague, and the ride is uh, a bit lumpy. It's never harsh, but it's always fidgety. There's so much unsprung mass in the solid axles, and the body is quite light, so that's quite easily deflected. So there's, there's quite a lot going on, but thanks to the sort of balloony tyres and enough suppleness in the suspension, it's not, it's not harsh. This is not a car that tries to be in any way sporting. It never kicks back. You never, you never worry for the sake of the wheels or anything like that. So from that point of view, it's not the least refined thing to wear. But there's quite a lot of noise. It's quite wearing. You sit at 60 rather than 70 on the motorway just to make life a bit easier for yourself. If I drove 20,000 motorway miles a year, I don't suppose I'd choose one. That's fine. That's not what this car is for, is it? What it's meant to do is tour around country roads like this which it is, and then when it gets off-road, be second to none in its class. Okay, so this is what is called a public byway, if you're looking from overseas. Sometimes we call them a green lane here, sometimes we call them a boat, which is an old word, byway open to all traffic, which is what they used to be called. But anyway, it's a public byway. There are restricted byways you can't use motorised vehicles on, but public byways you can. And if you've got an off-roader, look, you should, because A, it tests the car and uses it to its proper extent a little bit. And also, B, if you don't use these things, well, some people who don't like 4x4s will stick big tree trunks and things across them and they try to block them off and they try to close them and it's a right of way. It's an ancient historic right of way for vehicles and should be used as such. But what's the Jimny like on it? Well, I've come straight off the road, so I'm still in too high, high, hush, hush, hush away at the moment. I can go four high, four wheel drive, and for low, this isn't very challenging, I'll go in two for the minute, but it will get, I believe, a little bit muddier and stickier in a bit. So I will pop it in four, which I can do on the move. The sort of softness of the damping means that the ride off road is, is okay and the fact that there's a little bit of um, a give in the sidewalls, the fact that I'm not going very quickly off road means that it just, takes a long ground clearance is pretty good. Right, clearance is, 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 is really good, actually. The approach and departure angles are high because it's very short of overhang. And the Jimny is a light car with, with, with what, 1,200 kilos, something like that. So it's a really lightweight car. I think that's why you still see them in fun off-road situations. The old SJ, for example, and the more recent Jimny. Because they don't weigh very much, they skip over things, and although you wouldn't necessarily pick a fairly high revving, naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine that's 100 horsepower and quite a lot less than that in pounds-feet, 
it doesn't matter quite so much because it doesn't have quite so much weight to propel. So it's good fun. And off-roading, if you just do it sensibly and responsibly, it doesn't do a huge amount of damage to the tracks. It doesn't annoy anybody. Shouldn't annoy anybody. It's quite a nice way to enjoy driving and approach the limits of your car without having to hire a circuit. Just quite a nice way to see the country. Anyway, that's enough of the new car for now, although I could quite happily go green laning all day in it, all day in it. But let's go and meet one they made earlier. So I've got an inordinate amount of time for the new Jimny. It's one of my favourite cars of the moment. And I think you can see, can't you, the family resemblance between Jimny's young and old. This is actually a second generation car. It was known as the SJ in Europe, but the Jimny elsewhere. This one was built in Spain, actually, by Santana. So let's see, though, if the family collection goes beyond just the way the two look. In 1970, Suzuki wanted an off-roader which would meet the country's K-Cart regulations for compact, lightweight cars. The LJ10, LJ for light Jeep, was the answer. It had a two-cylinder, two-stroke engine, and it wouldn't crack 50 miles an hour, but that didn't matter. During testing, Suzuki took competitors to a beach and watched them sink into the sand. But weighing about as much as a Caterham 7, the LJ10 kept on going. The third generation car was on sale for 20 years with only light facelifts. It arrived in 1998 and it never really aged after that. It was cramped and rode badly and felt weirdly tall compared to normal cars when it was launched. And 20 years later, everything's an SUV and ride quality's worsened so the Jimny feels almost normal, though it was still brilliant off-road. We've got videos of it elsewhere on this channel being brilliant in mud. But today I'm driving an SJ410. And so this is it. So it's not the first generation Jimny because I think outside Japan it didn't get a lot of recognition. This is what we have come to know as the Suzuki Jeep is what they used to call it. Jeep being a brand name owned by somebody else, obviously. But it gained a lot of traction in the UK in the 1980s. It was made all around the world. This one is a Santana, which means it's made in Spain and was marketed as the SJ, but it is a version of the Jimny. It was registered in the UK in the late 1980s. This particular one belongs to the man who sets up our cameras. And um, it spent much of its life on an estate kind of doing off-roady stuff. So it's only recently MOT'd and tacked. A little sign here saying, please don't take it off the estate. And I wonder if most of its 75,000 miles were off-roady are one of the reasons why it has steering of apocalyptic vagueness at anything above 20 miles an hour and it's hard to know exactly how much above 20 miles an hour we're going because the speedo is currently saying anything between 30 and 45 okay. it's saying one then the other in quite quick succession and if i do i mean i've got to sort of take a take a take a chunk to change the direction then i can do that there is absolutely no deflection in this car's trajectory at all you could get a 1 litre or a 1.3. This is a 1 litre car with only about 45 horsepower, but then it only weighs about 900 kilos. So the fact that it's only got 45 horsepower, a little bit more than that in talk, about 55 pounds foot, is actually, it's, it gets on quite easily. The gearbox is beautifully sweet. It's a really lovely, it first came with a four speed, this one is a 1989 car, gets five speed gearbox. It's a really sweet, slick gear change. And the engine is quite sweet as well. It's got a carburetor, but it's really lovely. Is the Jimny experience intact? In a way, so the ride has got all the knobbliness of the latest Jimny, but with a real sort of crash about it as well. Structurally, it's not dissimilar. It's very short, it's very light, it has a separate body and chassis. But if anybody says to you, well, the Jimny hasn't really come very far, it's still a really dodgy thing to drive on the road, Come and have a go in an SJ, in an SJ, because the new car is light years ahead of it. But then as now, it was made as an off-roader first and foremost, and a road car second, which a lot of people didn't really take properly to heart in the UK. And there was a big kerfuffle in the 80s when 
couple of SJs fell over in cornering. And not unreasonably, I think Suzuki said, well, because this was the first small off-roader that people, I think, took to their hearts and started using in an urban environment. Started using them like normal cars. When you corner hard in something like this, the chances are it will fall over. It's an off-roader. So let's see what this is like away from an environment to which certainly its steering is not naturally suited. fair to say there's a little bit less suppleness to the SJ than there is to the latest chimney. Again I've got two high which I'm in at the minute I'll slip it in for high in a minute and there is also a four low which we may or may not need. Now for bear in mind a one litre car a naturally aspirated engine is not something you would think would be over blessed with torque but here I am on an incline off-road I'm off everything, and on idle, slightly faster idle than its factory spec, it's pulling itself along ably. What's cool about this car is how small it is. Actually quite spacious inside, but well, you know, reasonably, to the extent that you wouldn't want to drive into anything else, I don't think. But it's just brilliant. Visibility is fantastic. I can see absolutely every corner, I and mean, I can almost reach every corner. And apart from the fact that it is shaking and rattling like a skeleton masturbating in a filing cabinet, it's really good fun to just sort of thread it between the ruts exactly as you want. It's just great fun. How does it compare with today's Jimny? Well, it's very obviously a car from two generations ago. But the main character you know, the things that define a Jimny today, it's small, it's light, has a Revy engine and a lovely gear shift. This car has all of those. It's not a serious, sensible, everyday car. It wasn't when it was new. I don't think it is now. But as a thing to own for high days and holidays, a nice sunny day, throw the roof down, drive it across some green lanes for lunch somewhere and then drive it back again. I mean, what a lovely way to own and run and enjoy a car. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Is enjoying motorised transport, enjoying the car for all of the freedom and all of the wonderfulness that it gives you, that sitting on a bus or a train does not. This is, this is great. So there are many things that it is not. It is not very refined. It's not very capable on the road, it's not very precise. But there are also a lot of things that it is. It's, it's great fun, it's very capable, it's just utterly charming from start to finish. I've got to say, a Jimny of any era is just a lovable, charming piece of motoring heritage. If you've liked this, we will have more Autocar Heroes videos coming over the coming months. A BMW M car is in production. So subscribe and turn on notifications and you will never miss one.